Hey guys, it's Max. In this video, I'm talking about my $1,200 ultimate portable 4K video editing machine. Now, you guys have asked a lot of questions about this computer. Usually, it's right back there behind me. And I wasn't going to make a video on it until I got so much requests, people asking about information, stuff like that. So if you guys want to know the full spec list, I'll have a link in the video description. The computer is in here. My main goal for this build was for it to be portable, for it to run OS X so I can use Final Cut, my preferred video editing software, and for it not to cost a lot of money. Now the reason I built this machine is after I did my comparison test between my Mac Pro that cost me five grand and a $3,000 5K iMac, I was really surprised how well the iMac did. I beat it in majority of the tests. I kind of set out to build a machine that is inexpensive, and it's gonna edit really well. This is it, so let's take a look at how it looks when I take it out of the backpack. As you guys can see, this computer is really small. Now, it's not as small as the Mac Pro, but it's still small enough to fit inside a backpack with a full-size monitor, as well as keyboard, mouse, and the other accessories. So let's go ahead and talk about the performance. Uh, first, I wanna start off with some benchmarking software. So look at Geekbench 3. Now, you see that uh, the Hackintosh performs very similar to the iMac, and that's because they're using the same exact processor, same amount of uh, RAM in there. And you look at the six-core Mac Pro, it actually does a little bit better in the multi-threading because it has six cores instead of four, but in a single core, it does worse. Meaning if you have uh, programs like Photoshop, Lightroom, if you're using stuff like that, it's gonna perform better on a uh, Hackintosh or an iMac. Basically, uh, you need faster clock speed instead of more cores. Now let's look at Unigen Heaven Benchmark. You'll see that the Hackintosh does better than both of those computers and it also runs cooler. So it's another advantage of the system. It does run fairly cool. Now let's look at some video editing performance. Looking at 1080p in Premiere Pro, you'll see the Hackintosh does the best out of all three systems. Going over to Final Cut, you'll see the iMac exports the fastest. Now this is gonna be something you're gonna see a lot. It's using Intel QuickSync technology to really push uh, the exports, so it definitely takes the lead there. But as far as actually editing the video, it's gonna perform very similar to the Hackintosh. Looking uh, at some uh, footage with LUTs and grain applied, you'll see in Premiere Pro, the Hackintosh once again is doing the best, and in Final Cut, um, it's right there in the middle, doing better than the Mac Pro. So taking a look at 4K, you'll see uh, that once again, it's the fastest in Premiere Pro, and in Final Cut, it does take third place. Now, this last test is the most stressful test. It's four 4K videos scaled into a 4K timeline. Each one of those videos has two LUTs applied and film grain. So it's a really, really stressful on a system. So here you see in Premiere Pro, it's definitely taking third, the iMac's definitely taking third place and the Hackintosh is leading ahead once again. So it's really doing that, taking care of that well. And uh, Final Cut, iMac, once again, does take first place. That's why it's really impressive, but it's using an Intel QuickSync technology, and uh, my Hackintosh does exactly the same time as that Mac Pro that costs three times more when it's used or four times more when it's new. So there you go, you guys could see the performance of this machine, it really does well. Now one thing that it really also leads ahead is the temperatures, it runs a lot, cooler and also quieter than the iMac because the iMac is made to be just thin and beautiful. So the iMac does overheat when it's transcoding or if you're doing some gaming and it has to throttle the CPU down. Uh, the Mac Pro doesn't have to throttle anything and it does run uh, warmer than the setup but the Mac Pro is completely silent. This computer is audible. You hear the fans but it does run cooler. So it's a little bit, you know, different setup with all three of those computers. Um, so I'm, I'm basically really happy with how this thing performed, how well it did when I needed to be traveling uh, to different locations. The reason why I am putting together a different computer is because I don't need to travel anymore. I'm basically in my office all the time when I'm editing. So I got a bigger motherboard uh, and a bigger case so I can have a RAID setup in there as well as 32 gigs of RAM 
course, any small system with the micro uh, mini ITX board, it's only gonna support 16 gigs of RAM, which is enough for most projects, really. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you guys thought of this setup, of the parts that I use, the performance uh, that it puts out. If you guys have any questions, you guys can ask me. And once again, all the parts are listed in the video description. And if you wanna take a look at the backpack I use or the monitor, if you wanna copy this build, uh, you guys can find the info as well. So this really proves that you don't need a Mac Pro if you wanna be portable and if you wanna have good performance. And it also proves if you need to be portable, you don't mind taking a little bit more weight, you don't need to buy a laptop. You can get better performance, about twice as good performance compared to a MacBook Pro at about half the price. So definitely performance per dollar, especially when you're looking into having something that's portable, this thing is ultimate. That's why I called it the ultimate uh, 4K portable computer. So uh, let me know what you guys think and I will see you guys in the next one.